Hey, this is Brian from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Uh, lovely day out there. Hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, we had a real busy day here. A lot of people buying and selling precious metals, which is kind of odd. You're wondering why some people are selling metals at this point. Uh, I am too. Uh, however, they have their reasons. Some people have bought at a much lower level and they're taking a profit. And there's nothing wrong with that. But before I get into that, let's talk about why the world is ending, or not why the world is ending, but why we have jumped into a new universe. You know the world is going crazy when <laughs> a jet flying out of LA says that we just passed a guy in a jet pack. So <laughs> I don't know. It has nothing to do with precious metals or anything like that. But man, every time I keep looking at headlines out there and I'm thinking to myself, it's just getting crazier and crazier. Uh, Tower, American 1997, we just passed a guy in a jet pack. Uh, if, if this isn't a sign that uh, <laughs> uh, things are nuts out there when people are flying by LA airport in jet packs, unreported jet packs, uh, man, it's just anarchy. Jet packs, dogs and cats living together. Oh, wow, I woke up in crazy world a while back ago. <laughs> so let's take a look at today's markets and see what happens. And let's see here. Yesterday it was up. I forget what the price was, but I thought it was around 1950 or something like that. 1960 was up. I'm really surprised. It says down 33 bucks uh, today. I was really surprised to see a down day. However, I, no, I wasn't surprised. I, I, let me rephrase that. I kind of thought we would see a par value or a little bit up day. I didn't see in, any indications that we're going to make the dollar stronger today or. I really haven't had a chance to read into why the metals are down a little bit today. It could be in any number of reasons, but nothing uh, uh, nothing that's going to keep it down or nothing that's going to have any medium or long-term impacts. So let's take a look here, 1934 being the low, uh, and not too far off from where New York closed. So New York opens up around, what, 9 o'clock or something like that. Uh, the high at New York was 1968, which probably was closer to the morning time or in the early afternoon. And by 2 o'clock or whenever they open, what is it, uh, opens at 8.20 uh, Eastern time. Hmm, okay. Uh, open a little bit earlier than I thought. Uh, so <clears throat> by, by noontime, probably around 1968, and then around closing time, back around 1934. So it did close a little lower than I expected yesterday. Again, I don't know dollar strength or whatever. Uh, however... What I like to see is that silver is just kind of hanging in. It says uh, down a uh, dollar twenty-seven, uh, so that would mean a range of the high twenty-eight. Uh, what was it? Twenty-seven ninety-five to twenty-seven eleven. Well, that's not a dollar twenty-three. Uh, that's probably from the opening yesterday. I have to look. And then platinum kind of still sitting above that nine hundred mark. So you know, down forty-eight bucks. But you know, that's kind of a big swing on platinum. Um, again, metals across the board kind of seem to get whacked. Uh, I don't know why, but it, nothing to worry about. Good buying opportunity if it stays that way tomorrow and you can make it in tomorrow and buy at these levels. Uh, why the hell not? I don't care. <clears throat> we make money going up and down. It actually shows who you. We'll show you how to do that. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at what the world markets are. Well, I'm going to take that back because, to be honest, I didn't even look up and get a chance to look at this before I, I started this video here. And it looks like we are already on the rebound from the lows in New York. Uh, world markets are currently at and still open. And let me refresh that page right here. A quickie refresh, and we'll go down. Yeah, world markets are still up here uh, from uh, New York close, uh, like 10 bucks, and it looks like we're getting that little bounce back. Um, so, you know, I like where we're at with metals. Uh, same thing with silver. Silver up a little bit, up a quarter. And uh, platinum uh, up a couple bucks as well. Uh, so I think we've seen our dip. And from what the from what it's looking like here, unless we see kind of a repeat of tomorrow, some kind of selling that happened, maybe ETFs, contractual selling, something I'm not quite sure. Uh, I don't think it happened in the physical markets, definitely not. Uh, and uh, possible, like I said, ETF selling or something, or maybe a stronger dollar. I didn't get a chance to look is what caused these markets to dip like this. Uh, again, temporary, and I can think we're seeing that in the uh, aftermarket that it's just temporary. Uh, let's see what happens tomorrow, though. I'm a little bit hesitant in even giving a, uh, you know, we're, we're getting into a holiday weekend. Trading is going to be really, really quiet. It's already started to get quiet right now. I mean, the uh, business is quiet everywhere, and, and when you get into holiday weekends, it's just going to even slow, the effect is even worse. So we're, we're going to have a slow holiday weekend. It wouldn't surprise me to see silver and gold and platinum get hammered this week a little bit. Uh, uh, <clears throat> again, that's just my, my feeling, and based on, uh, usually these holiday weekends, there's very, very slow trading, and that's usually time 
the times when these people that, you know, I don't, they're not doing anything illegal, but people that manipulate the gold and silver paper markets, they like to go in on weekends and <clears throat> slow trading times and bang these markets and, and it usually causes uh, a cascading effect before it stops. But again, it's only temporary and it's probably game playing. And I suspect, I think we might see that this weekend. I'd really be surprised if we seen an up market over the weekend. Uh, but I believe after the holiday weekend and uh, when everything opens up on Tuesday in New York, uh, we'll see stronger markets overall. That's just my opinion. I'm forecasting way out there. I'm just using that holiday trend that I've noticed after four years that markets in gold, silver, and platinum always seem to get banged during week trading times or week trading hours when everybody's kind of on holiday or really not trading metals. That's when it seems that it gets hit the most by ETFs or whatever the hell happens in the paper markets. Uh, that's just my observation in my opinion. And uh, again, wouldn't worry about it if you can buy these dips, great. Uh, and, I, and I still think 1943 and 1950 is a dip. So if you can even buy that and come in tomorrow, fine. And if it drops a little bit by Friday, even better. Uh, however, who knows, I could be wrong in that as well. Uh, let's take a look at a little headline here that I think it might have something to do with markets too. Because <clears throat> I think the market in general, um, uh, Wall Street per se and business in general, is not a big fan of Biden because of taxes and stuff. And Democrats tend to spend more and are not really favored by uh, uh, big business uh, and big Wall Street interests and bankers and stuff. Because of that, they're afraid, you know, more taxes is not good for their bottom line. And... Uh, uh, I saw this today, and I kind of am getting the feeling myself, uh, and again, I didn't vote for Trump or by, or, or Hillary, and I'm, I'm kind of not a voter either way, and I'm not going to tell you who I voted for. I'm going to stay out of that. Uh, but it looks like that the bookies are kind of uh, uh, going and supporting Trump right now. And you know, the overall feeling, and the same feeling I got in the last election, now mind you, I didn't vote for Trump or, or Hillary, um, but remind you, um, I got the same feeling in last election. It looks, I'm thinking kind of Trump looks like he might win this election. I, mean, I don't know what that's going to do for the country. However, it may uh, uh, cause uh, business to kind of relax a little bit, realizing they're not going to be taxed to hell uh, like they thought they would if Biden wins. But again, this election is far from over. Anything could happen in between. So let's see what happens. Uh, but again, I kind of think that uh, uh, Wall Street and business and banking is kind of relaxing a little bit, thinking that Trump may win at this point. Uh, so that might relax markets a little bit more. Maybe that's what we're seeing with up stock markets and uh, uh, other things. Uh, I kind of like this article. You should read it. And uh, I'm not going to read it to you right now. I'm going to keep this kind of report shorter than normal. Anyway, it's the highway to hell. And... Uh, in, in March, Bill Ackerman made a stunning comment on CBC when he said, hell is coming. However, if you had it, well, anyways, we'll kind of move down here uh, to kind of what he is saying. To be clear, the U.S. economy may enter a depression soon. Well, man, I don't like that D word. I don't think I've ever seen a real depression. I don't think anybody my age, I don't even know if my parents seen a depression. You know, they kind of were a little bit after that. They seen the after effects of the depression. But I know my grandparents saw a depression. And, uh, you know, I really don't want to see one. But, you know, the more that word comes up, especially amongst uh, uh, people that are uh, hmm, uh, re uh, respected in the uh, financial world, that kind of scares me a little bit. Uh, the, the inevitable crash that will occur sooner or later could be one of the worst crises since the 1929 crash. This I don't want to hear. I mean, it's a totally different environment than it was in 1929 as far as uh, what, they're, what they're doing now, what they did not do in 1929 is in 1929 they did not print currency. They did not go out of control out of currency. They were on a gold standard. They just couldn't do it. They, they, you know, they had a responsibility to, 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 because the money was backed by gold. Well, they don't have that responsibility anymore and they can just print this stuff as much as they want. So that's the solution. The reason probably we are not in depression because they are just printing their way out of it. And frankly, uh, I'm watching the Fed right now and I'm thinking to myself, uh, I, the Fed has got to know this. The Fed has got to know that there's no recovery here. It's just impossible. So maybe at this point, this is just like, <clears throat> you know, being on the Titanic, 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 the, uh, the Titanic, uh, and, and asking everybody to bail uh, because you really know that you're not going to save the ship. However, uh, you're going to keep it afloat just a little bit longer. And I believe that's exactly what the Fed's doing. I think they know they have a, a sinking ship. This is the reason they're just printing willy-nilly, just to keep people happy and from rioting. 
and from uh, uh, maybe other awful things. Uh, however, maybe this whole idea of a financial reset has some uh, uh, credibility behind it. Uh, and we'll talk about that on another episode here, the, the financial reset. Remind me. And uh, please make some comments below if you got any thoughts about it. Uh, let's take a look at the Wall Street Journal here, which I like to look at, as I've always said, you know, if something up here says expect a stronger dollar this week, well, we know gold's probably going to take a hit this week. And this is why you want to look. It's like reading between the lines, so to speak. Um, so <clears throat> let's take a look. And uh, what we see here is Dow rallies above 29,000, S&P 500. All right. Well, the Dow rallies above 29,000. That's not unexpected. But you know what? Is this a result of just them printing more and more money and that money needs a place to go? And why not go someplace that has returns and that the herd is into? As long as the herd is in there dumping money in there, you're probably going to make money. Uh, <clears throat> but nothing about gold or silver, nothing gives me any indication that we're going to see uh, an up or down uh, market in precious metals this week. And that's the reason I like to look at Wall Street Journal. And if you notice, they don't mention anything about gold or silver. So I definitely don't look to Wall Street Journal for any guidance about gold and silver. And when they do talk about it, they're often, uh, whoa, ooh, just look what I saw here. Recovering dollar hits gold and silver. There we go. Interesting. Well, what did I say? What was the reason the metals got hit a little bit today? Uh, and recover. Well, I think they got part of this right. A stronger dollar does dent gold and silver, but recovering? Come on, Wall Street Journal, you know better than that. Uh, you know, recovering maybe in a temporary sense, but not really. Boy, isn't that a pretty picture, though? A worker is pouring silver from a furnace at a smelter in Sydney. Uh, gosh, I'd love to kind of visit one of these uh, uh, smelters one day. Is that the right word, too, smelter? Can someone put down there smelter? I've heard that term before. Yeah, that's a smelter. It's a different than a melter. <laughs> so... Anyways, uh, gosh, I wish I'd read this article a little bit earlier, but it does talk about dollar strength and why gold went down today, and I didn't realize the dollar was a little bit higher. The bang, there's your answer, folks. Just like I might have thought, a little stronger dollar caused the price of metals to go down a little bit, and maybe it will down this week, and it will maybe get monkey hammered at the end of the week by a bunch of players, but it won't last long. Hey, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals. You know, um... Uh, don't get thrown off by rare coins in there. We do a lot of rare coins, but precious metals is one of our primary businesses. And uh, quite frankly, if you're an expert at rare coins, and then uh, it's so easy to do precious metals. In fact, I could teach a monkey how to buy and sell gold. I mean, at the level of what we're doing. And I don't mean it like that. Like, like you have to have skills to kind of see trends and markets and know what and what to buy. But uh, 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 buying gold and silver is really not rocket science. Uh, and let me show you how to do it, because uh, once I show you how to do it, uh, you know, uh, it makes my job easier as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my videos, please, if you're watching this. I'd like to see at least one more tick up in each subscriber. It makes me that much happier. And uh, uh, make sure to check out our other videos. We've got some cool stuff coming up, including, remember, I told you this weekend we'll try to get that video up about safes and safe place to put your gold and silver in, uh, in your house or thereabouts. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 for live quotes on precious metals, real live quotes, uh, not made up ones, and uh, to ask us what kind of product we have available and what prices we have available. If you want an education, look at my other videos uh, and then come into our store and ask us anything you didn't learn there. Thanks for watching and have yourself a great day. Bye now.